All right, now every once in a while, you are going to find yourself in a position where you have no control. This gentleman here, this is a customer of mine, his name is John, and uh, John has been waiting a little bit longer for this item than he needs to have been, and uh, it's because of this right here. As soon as I started making these steel strikers, my forge decided to take a crap all over me, I guess I should say. And so I wasn't able to produce these for my strikers. And it was one of those things where I had to wait until I get a new forge. But as a blessing, I had one sent to me. It just took a little bit longer to get to me than, uh, than I expected. And that was at no fault of the individual that sent it to me. It's basically my own fault. But anyway, long story short, we've got it taken care of now got these going so now it's time to make John his sheath. I wanted to do this on video um, so that way I could tell John that I'm sorry. These things happen. Wish they didn't but unfortunately I'm not Walmart and sometimes they do happen. Yes what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be making a neck knife. Or a leather, good lord, that Kydex sheath is stiff. Oof. It's all right, I'd rather have it a little stiff than a little loose, but we are going to make a leather sheath for this Topps MSK 2.5 right here. I've made one of these in the past, so it's gonna be kind of fun to make another one. I actually like these little knives. I would, I would really like to get my hands on one of these, to be honest with you little three finger knife. So I'm gonna do a decent amount of wet forming. So I pulled my scrap box down to look to see if I had a small piece of seven ounce veg tan leather and it doesn't. But every time I pull this box down, I'm reminded of this one individual one time that I had to throw a sheath away because I had made a mistake and this person actually legitimately got pissed off at me saying that I disrespected the cow by wasting material and good lord people if people realized how much scrap material I actually save and utilize on a daily basis that person was the it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard in all my life that guy he, I'm pretty sure he's brain damaged because I guess he's forgotten that he's never, you know, left a little bit of steak on his plate or didn't take the last bite of that cheeseburger. He's probably a vegan. That's the problem. Now, I'm not dogging vegans. Okay. Don't you all jump on me. You want to live that lifestyle, live that lifestyle, do your thing, but use common sense for God's sakes, people disrespect the cow. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and keep a flawed sheath and respect the cow, but disrespect my customer. We good? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Peter Bogosian. Hello. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing it. I appreciate it, man. Um, I, I, I think I found out about you through Sam Harris. Well, I'm not sure, but uh, you're also friends with my friend Roy Sam. Oh, Roy is a great guy. Great guy. Great guy. He, he got excited when he found out that you were coming on. Rory, of course, martial artist, uh, former UFC fighter. Right. And, uh, He's tapped me many times. <laughs> I'm sure he tapped me many times. So you, uh, you're, uh, you, you work at uh, University of Portland State. So this idea of testability and people can figure out things for themselves. They don't have to go on the history of tradition or you know, some guy punched a bull in the head or there was a blind nun walking through this and she killed all these guys. That's what we always have to deal with. There's no resisting opponent. So when there's no resisting opponent, it's not a t it's not testable. You can't bring the tools of science to right. it. So, so you thought you were engaging in an activity that brought you closer to your desired objectives, but it didn't. So I've kind of decided to change it up a little bit with this particular knife. Um, and the. And by that is what I mean is I've basically decided that I'm going to try to do it a little bit differently than what I've normally done this style of sheath. 
So it's kind of just experimenting. And you can see is what I've done is I've just continued to let form, you know, this, this front plate here. And then I came back with a thicker nine ounce veg tan on the back side. And I didn't get real severe with this one. I just put just a little tiny relief in it right here. So just kind of play with doing it just a little bit differently. I hope it works, but never know. Remember guys, you're working with leather here. Leather is nothing more than skin. So if you're going to use an oven to speed up your wet forming, if it burns you, it's going to burn your leather. Just keep that in mind. Is what I like to do is I like to set my oven at about 115 degrees, put my leather in there for about 30 minutes after I've wet formed it. Now after it's set in there for about a half an hour, I pull it out, I work the leather just a little bit more, put it back in, repeat that process. I repeat that process until my leather is about 90 to 95 percent dry and then I'll bring it back out and kind of play with it. Mm-hmm. 